Hey you guys, I wanted to talk to you about this article I found on Atlanta Black Star and provide you some commentary on it as well as my thoughts and opinions surrounding this situation. This story talks about how the fashion retailer known as Guess has plagiarized and stolen a design that was first used by a black owned brand and I find it to be interesting that black people are so creative and innovative with their ideas and the moment we create something that is tailored and unique for our community then here comes a larger society appropriating and stealing our templates, our outlines, etc. for their own benefit, never giving credit where credit is due. This is because black people have very lucrative and marketable products, merchandise, and culture that others are able to monetize while we always end up being swindled or hoodwinked. Even our colloquialisms, the way in which we interact with each other is heavily used by other cultures and races of people. So it doesn't surprise me that black people ultimately are the ones who decide what's cool and what's popular. Everyone always pays close attention to what we're doing so that they can run back to their community and emulate our concepts and water down certain elements so that it's not grounds for copyright infringement. And because the product is slightly changed or altered in these cases, when you try to file a lawsuit, these cases are almost always thrown out because while it is eerily identical, it's not verbatim or copied 100% in detail to the original, therefore an application for a lawsuit would not be admissible. And it is frustrating for the black fashion designers, I'm sure, because here it is that you're trying to create something for black people. You know, people are always telling us that we wear European brands and all that regurgitated rhetoric. But when we do create something for ourselves, they come in and copy everything while modifying certain details to make it appear that while it has similarities, it's different. And because these designers have a larger platform, people will gravitate towards that brand first before the black owned brand. And I'm willing to bet that Guess never tried to reach out to this black designer to collaborate or even compensate him for basically stealing the design. But that's the grimy and malicious ways of the larger society, which is why I find it laughable that they claim to be so authentic and original, all the while copying off of our test papers in class. And I also want to say this, when it comes to marketing, there are no mistakes in their advertising campaigns. When ideas are presented to a review board to see if it's acceptable with distribution, they always research to make sure the design doesn't parallel or mirror another designer idea. I guess when it comes to an independent black brand though, that rule doesn't apply seeing as how they see us as a minor obstacle. One they think wouldn't cause their plans to be disrupted. And you guys know the deal. I'll read the article and periodically stop to offer some commentary in between. So let's go ahead and get started. So the article starts off by saying, American clothing brand and retailer guest has reacted after coming under fire last week for what critics say is a ripoff of the black owned brand Teflar shopping bag founded by a black designer hailing from Queens, New York, Telfar Clemens. Guess, faux leather tote looks uncannily similar to the Telfar Bushwick Birkin bag with the tote-like feel and the logo G painted in the middle of the purse, echoing the Telfar logo placed in the center of his bag. Fans reacted to the comparisons of the two brands on Twitter. Someone wrote, I hope Telfar sues the H out of y'all at Guess, someone tweeted. Is this a lawsuit in the making? It could be, wrote another. As the issue picked up steam on social media, Twitter users shared their frustration about fashion and clothing designs and clothing companies ripping off black creatives concepts. This is what I was telling you guys about. Typically what these big name companies will do is change the stitching or a logo so that it does not fall under the classification of a lawsuit, meaning that something as simple as one or two differences in detail inhibits the action of litigation. When you guys see this picture, it's clear as day. They copied Telfar's design. The only difference was that they took the T off the bag and slapped a G on there. And like I said, more than likely what they did was change the pattern of the stitching. And you know what I find to be the most ridiculous of the situation and those similar to this is the fact that you have these big budget companies and organizations and you would think the more money they have, it would afford them some originality and creativity. But because they lack both of these things, 
they have to come to our community and steal ideas. I don't know if you guys remember this story. It came out about a year or two ago where this woman from the larger society thought she had such a great idea with this nightcap idea, when really it wasn't inventive in any kind of way because it was already popularized by black women. Basically, she tried to sell a bonnet and added some additional words that sounded pleasant onto the product to make it seem like it was truly a way to maintain and keep hair fresh and invigorated through the night. That story made me so mad because that woman had the nerve to charge $75 for these things and black women have been doing this for as long as I can remember. And bonnets don't cost that much, but because of the larger society's psychopathology of believing that stealing ideas and rebranding it as somehow indicative of originality, they've normalized this behavior and see no error in this action. You guys saw that black people on social media were outraged by this and rightfully so because at this point, we are very much aware of this recurrent pattern of behavior. This is nothing new. They've been doing this since the creation of Greece when they tried to pretend that Greek architecture was not heavily influenced by African architecture. So again, this is nothing surprising, but moving on, the article says, so far definitely has a case if they copyrighted their designs. This is really sad that they'll rip off smaller businesses. Creations knowing that they might not be able to afford to keep up a lawsuit, someone wrote. How do you have the money to mimic a black designer, but you don't have the money to create your own designs? What are you paying your team for? To Google search? It's giving desperate. It's giving bankrupt. It's just sad to see another young black creative's work get stolen. It's so deliberate, someone else wrote. Clements introduced the shopping bag in 2014 at the autumn slash winter runway show. In an interview with the publication Days, Clements stated that he aspired to be Michael Kors, but on purpose. The company used a $400,000 fund from the Clements receiving a CFDA slash Vogue Fashion Award to focus on reiterating the shopping bag, according to OKPlayer.com. He re-released it in 2018 with a broader variety of colors and sizes. It really represents us moving from an idea to a business, Clemens said in a Vogue 2018 profile. It represents everything we are about, like our clothes. It's completely unisex and every possible kind of person can wear it, but it's also extremely accessible and practical. Celebrities like ASAP Ferg, Bella Hadid, and Dua Lupi, hope I pronounced that correctly, have all rocked the popular item that ranges in price from $150 to $257, according to the Teflar website. The G tote costs between $78 to $95. I have to say, Telfar sounds like a very intelligent man, although the only thing that made me cringe was when he said he aspired to be like Michael Kors on purpose. To me, saying something like that stifles your creative prowess because you have the capability to be something much larger than that. I wish he would have said something along the lines of he aspires to be the most successful clothing brand out there, but to say that you wish to be like a man who I'm sure has expressed racial sentiments behind closed doors is extremely awkward. And this situation itself also reminds me of how Fashion Nova steals designs and ideas from black women and black social media influencers. It's happened on numerous occasions and every time they always offer this bland, dry apology stating that they were unaware, yet it's very coincidental that this has happened on almost a consecutive basis. Yet when a Kim Kardashian, who is a woman from the larger society, calls them out for the same thing, then suddenly they decide to take action and right the wrong they've done, which only further illustrates the complicity society has with making sure black women and black designers are never afforded the same immediate course of action, if any is taken at all. And I'm pretty sure it's not just Fashion Nova that does this. In fact, if you guys know of any other fashion designer brands that have stolen black people's ideas, please tell me in the comments section below. But this needs to continue to be called out for what it is. It's plagiarism, it's appropriation, it's Christopher Columbus thinking he discovered America when it was already inhabited by native people. Every bit of this is wrong, but I'll go ahead and wrap this up because there isn't much left after this part, but it says, By March 27th, Guest issued a statement about the Fuhrer and said it was withdrawing its bag from sale. Signal Brands, the handbag licensee of Guest Incorporated, has voluntarily halted the sale of its G logo totes. Some on social media have compared the totes to Telfar Global's shopping bags. Signal Brands does not wish to create any impediments to Telfar Global success and as such has independently decided to stop selling the G logo totes. So they decided to stop selling the bags, but my thing is, did you compensate him or make sure that he was made whole for the obvious stolen fake knockoff that you guys tried to resell by putting a G on it? This is just like a college student copying and pasting 
a Wikipedia page word for word and only changing one word in the entire article. It really is a rationality that's glamorized and accessorized as ingenuity. However, like I stated earlier, because of the larger society's perception of this being something worthy of merit as opposed to this behavior being censured and condemned, they clearly adhere to a different set of morals and principles. Halting the sales of this bag indefinitely is not going to make Telfar whole on the millions potentially that this man lost out on, all because their conduct reveals that they don't possess any authenticity other than to steal, which is what they are known for doing. They steal ideas, they steal people, that is their trademark. You'd think they create a fashion brand called Stolen Beauty and put an S up there on the bag instead. Now that would have been more sufficient for me. But what do you guys think about this abysmal occurrence and other big name brands stealing ideas from independent black designers who work hard to come up with their own ideas? I believe these brands need to be held accountable and we should keep calling them out when they steal our ideas. But please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share this video. And I'll see you in the next one.